Okay, my friends, I'm just going to start right off. We found something never suspected, anything so bizarre, NASA says, when they went out and circled this asteroid and found it had like a satellite around it, which was what they call a contact satellite, which is two bits to actually attached together. And I'll show you basically what it is. Okay, shocker du jour. NASA found something they never suspected anything so bizarre. They went out to look at this asteroid and it has a satellite surrounding it, you know, around it like a moon almost. And it's a contact satellite, which means two pieces together. They say they've never seen anything so bizarre. Well, yes, they have. Comet 67P is basically the same thing as that. This is Comet 67P. And it's basically the same thing. It's a contact asteroid, meteorite, whatever you want to call it. There's a ball attached to another ball. Only this, I'm going to tell you what it is in a second. And it is what it is. That's all I can say. Now, a meteorite is different from an asteroid. Meteorites come close in, uh, well, comets, meteorites, comets, basically. This is a comet, 67P. And it comes close enough to the sun where the sun literally cooks it from the very intense radiation. You see how much radiation is on here? And it, it, I'm going to show you the comas coming off of here, which are gases that are being boiled off of this. Because this was biology. And still is, but it's cooking in the sunlight. You see this bundle right here? You see that bundle? And then you see these little stripes here? And you see we got a ball here and a ball up here. Let's take some other different shots of this and see what it looks like. Because they were right there, and actually they landed a lander on there. It was called the Philae Lander. This was a European Space Agency back in uh, 2014. I followed this as close as anybody, and I saw all the spectral, ana spectral analysis of all the particles they looked at, all biology, 100%, and um, they just sort of walked away from it because it was too much for them to accept. This is nothing more than, than eroded flesh and blood vessels and so forth, I mean uh, blood cells and so forth. And it, it, when the sun hits it just in the right places where there's still a lot of moisture left, it boils off the gases. And I'll show you that, the comas. But don't forget this structure right here and these bands. And then it snapped off here. You see this? This is in 2015. They're right up on this thing. The, the, the lander was right close and the, it was right there. Now, this is the anchor spot right here. These are these little anchors that would have held that in position. And the tendons run off this and wrap around this whole thing. I'll show you the anatomical in a second. This right here is where there's an artery going in here. A very, very big, big artery. Huge. And the sun is hitting it just the right way to boil it off just like it was on a gas grill or on a radiant grill where it's radiation hits it and it smokes it up. That's all it is, is, is a smoke of, and as the astronauts say the same thing, they say when they go out in space, it smells like steak. I'm not kidding you, that's exactly what they say. These here, these little jets shooting up here are because they're, they're what they call blood vessels. This is an artery. An artery is a huge tube that brings all the blood, the massive quantities of blood, and it's boiling off like crazy, that one spot. These are the little ones that distribute the blood all around the tissues that have to be completely forever serviced with blood. So all of these now, it's just being hit the right way. This is being very highly illuminated. There's no gases coming out because there is no no fluids in here which is the body fluids which is blood and this is this is literally saturated with blood this is that huge artery that was boiling off all those ju juices this is 40 meters is this much i think i figured out this would be about 500 feet something like that across 500 feet an artery can you imagine 500 feet this is what this this body part looks like on top of Raleigh, North Carolina. Look at the size of it. This is Raleigh, North Carolina. It's not a good day to be here in Raleigh that day. Look at the size of this thing. Now, that's uh, this contact meteorite, but it, oh, it's a body part. And here's what the body part is right here. You see this? This is the, the ball and the, the um, shaft, and then this comes over 
This is, I believe, I'm almost 100% certain, this is a hip joint. Or from a, a, a joint of some sort from some kind of an animal. And there it is right there. There's the ball, there's the neck, and there's a fracture. All right? Sometimes they fracture right here. And there's other ones like that. And here's what it looks like in the body right here. So that's a hip fracture right along this line. And I believe that is what we see here. You see that right here? It just comes over and it broke off here. Now, remember I showed you all those little stripey looking things in that bundle? Let's look at that again now that you know what this looks like. And here it is. This is what it does look like when it's built into the body. There's the ball up inside here, which is the anchor basically in the socket. And then that neck comes out. And then you have all these white little fibers coming off it, which are tendons and you have maybe possibly a muscle I don't know it gets pretty convoluted in there but this is what it looks like on 67p there's the tendon fibers there's the bundle of muscle or something I don't know it couldn't be more tendon fibers I don't know because they rep from here to there and different places so you can twist around and then it returns to the where it's supposed to be and then there's the, of course the ball all right, so I've just shown you what I consider to be a hip socket and ball broken and fractured, and, and there's the anatomical of it. Now, what about Benu and Psyche? This is Psyche. This is like a metal meteorite. They say it's worth billions of dollars. That's all they can talk about is the money. But you see all these little cavities here? Let me show you. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this is, did I say Psyche? This is Psyche. All right, Benu is another one. It's virtually identical to this. But Benu, they were actually able to land on it and get a sample, and it just returned to Earth. And I made my predictions of what it is, and I know exactly what it is. Let's take a look at that particular meteorite, or comet, or asteroid, whatever you want to call it. Here it is right here. It's identical, virtually identical to Psyche. And if you see this carefully, and you know what to look for, you see these big cavities here, and you see this ridge running around here? You see the color of this? This is, is biology, my friends. This is biology, and these are valves, vein, I mean, um, aortic valves, one or the other. They're, they're, they're in the, the heart, and here's what the heart looks like. Right? These are where all these tubes got come in and so forth. We're looking at the top end of this where the, the, the big holes are up at the top and then some little ones surround it. You see right here? Look. The big ones are up here and then you got the little ones that are around here and there because there's all kind of plumbing going on in your heart. You got veins and you got arteries, you got lymph, you got all kinds of stuff going on. And um, it's a pump. And it has muscles wrapping around it and this is where the muscle is right here and right underneath it's got the blood and this is the colors of blood and the black down here is also a color of blood this is the deoxygenated blood the vein blood this is arterial blood the red blood and then it pumps in different ways when I'm it goes in and out back and forth and you, you, your, your heart literally twists as that's how it pumps stuff is very interesting now again there's a the heart or I'm going to show you something else well here's a, here's an actual heart now what we saw here that that ridge around that heart is right there this stuff is tough that's and right below it is all that red gooey stuff that I just showed you and here's the tubing at the top all right here it is right again this is that part, part where it had, the white stuff is there. And then this is where the muscly stuff is, and there's the big tubes. So th these things were in space, and they were gigantic creatures. And everybody in the ancient texts wrote about the battles in the heavens. And this is, a, this is a gigantic meteorite. And that was a lung, right? Now, when I say it's a lung, I can guarantee you that was a lung. This little red dot right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to focus in on it. You see that little red Yes, I guess you can see that. You see that little red dot? That is literally where the blood fed in there. And I don't see any reason you couldn't get in there if you drilled in deep enough. You should be able to get something that's, that's 
possibly got some DNA. This was probably very, very, very hot. It smelted everything away except almost the iron. And now I have one right here that is an iron meteorite too. And, and I'm going to show you this in a microscope. And you can, you, you'll see no difference whatsoever between this and um, Comet Menu or Asteroid Menu because I have the close-ups of that one too. You see no difference whatsoever. And this again, this was the Williamette meteorite. And I have one here that's didn't come through space, but it's basically the same thing. It has all these alveoli cavities through there, and one big one in the bottom where everything pumps in. And this was all loaded with blood, too. If this came through and smelted, it would be like this. All right, did they shrink? Like this one, I don't know how big it was when it started, but everything burns off, and you end up with primarily iron. All right, because your blood is primarily iron. And the same thing happens to the hearts. They end up primarily iron, but there's a lot of extra blood. Blood has all the metals in it. And I, I, I gave an exact list of the chemistry that they will find in Comet Banu. Asteroid Banu, whatever you want to call it. It's this one right here. I know precisely what they're going to find. They landed in one of these craters, and I'll show you where they landed, and then I'll show you I have the same craters on mine, only they're just a smidge smaller. All right, here's something else to back up my claims. There's an iron meteorite that somebody cut in half, and here's these a red and a black spot. What's going on there? What's all this crystallization? These are all different types of metals that, that form different crystal patterns, but primarily it's iron. Now, when we drill down and look at this really close, you can see the blood. It's a vein and an artery. Where did it go to real close up? Where are you close up? Hmm. I thought I had, yep, there it is right there. All right, there's, you see the red? That's, that's red blood. And you see over here the black? That's the vein blood. All right, so vein and artery if in an iron meteorite. Well, where the hell would that come from? It was obviously some kind of a body part. And I would say this was probably a liver. It doesn't have the architecture of a heart or a lung. Livers are primarily also heavy metals, and uh, so that's, I, I don't know, that's just a guess. But it's obviously some kind of organ that had a ton of blood in there, or a ton of metals. Okay, so why do I feel so confident making all these statements? Because I have the proof right here. This is a stony meteorite, all right? It cooked off coming through through space like that and it's all blanched off and burnt off and what burnt off was the fleshy part of this fingertip that's a fingertip and I, I, I can almost absolutely prove that and this was where the red blood was it was still wet it boiled off and exploded out the black does not you see that round spot right there that's where the, our, uh, the vein is and same thing up there that's a vein these two don't blow out they harden up hard the red blood explodes right out because it stays wet, and it is still wet right in here now. If I drilled in here deep enough, I can get red blood out of there. Now, I don't know if the DNA would still hold up because it got pretty hot. It depends. I, it, the ones I had tested were on the earth. They didn't get hot, so I don't know what the heat would do to this. But I'm going to show you another fingertip that is from the earth that is identical to this, literally identical only it didn't cook. All right, this is the fingertip. This is the terrestrial fingertip. It's identical to this one. You see this hook right here? Look at that little hook. You see that spot right there in that spot? These are the veins. They don't blow out. They're there, but they don't blow out because they harden up. They have clamps. That little hook is where a tendon would have locked in to make this fingertip go like this. You see this? It's identical. Identical. You see that? Identical. You see the tip running off the top? No difference whatsoever. Identical. You see this little spot right there? You see that round circle? That's this right here. This one right here, you see? That's this right here. Alright, you with me so far? We got the hook right here. We got the tip running up here. Identical. Identical. No difference whatsoever. Now this one though was in the flood 
and it laid flat like this and it just flattened out all right it would have been big it would have been you know much bigger but it laid flat now underneath this is the bottom side this is where the red blood was the same as where this red blood was this exploded coming through space because it was just it exploded it got hot and boiled off and exploded this just turned hard as it leaked out and the red bloods leak out you see the red blood at the end it leaked out here too the vein doesn't do that the vein side and these are the veins and artery side one or the other now one of them pumps blood down and one of them brings the blood back but they have two tips at the end they have two tips on the side and two tips over here and that's just the nature of them. It's hard to see it in this, but trust me, that's, there's one here, one here, there's one here, one here, one on each end, and the blood comes in and comes back. That's how it works. Now, again, there's the blood vein, 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 and the vein up at the end doesn't blow out either. These are the two arteries, and the artery at the tip didn't blow out either because it had a good, easy place to blow out here. Now, this had the artery up here. You see, there's the artery way at the end artery artery that's where it leaked out and these are the vein vein and the vein up in here it didn't leak out the artery 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 leaks out and that's the flat literally identical almost no difference whatsoever this just got fried off and turned flat and this still has its 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 fascia on it well skin really it's a fingertip. They're both of them are fingertips. Now, all I can tell you is it's, there was battles in the heavens. This thing came out of the sky. This thing came out of the sky. And so did this one. And we'll look at this one in the microscope. Again, these are, these are iron meteorites when they're like lungs and hearts and stuff. When they're fingertips and other party pots, they, they turn into what they call stony ones. Just like 67P, that would be considered a stony meteorite. This one, though, is, is an iron meteorite. Now, let's take a look at it in the microscope versus what we have here. I think uh, this one right here. Okay, this is Benu. They landed right there. They were literally landed right there. You see these colors? You see the black and the orange and the red? <laughs> you see that? They landed right here. And it, this is really the colors and everything that are there. Where do you see what this is? Where do you see what's going on here? Okay, check this out. This is the little iron meteorite. It's in the microscope. This right here is asteroid Bennu. And this, they actually landed, they went, pop, and they grabbed a little chunk of that, and they just popped right back off. Now, really what I want you to look at is the colors, the textures, and so forth. You see these yellows and blacks and reds and all that right around here? That is nothing more than blood. And that is exactly what you're going to see in the microscope from right here. Here it is right there in the microscope. <laughs> there it is right there. That's a lung. Came through space. It's an iron meteorite. And that's still where the blood is. And I have put the catalase in there. I mean the uh, hydrogen peroxide. And gotten a catalase reaction from these deep inside. So there's still enzymes in there. To me that would probably be there's still DNA in this thing. Now, and this came through space. This is, remember I told you, look at the black and the yellow and the red and all that. Look, it's the same thing. It's identical. Virtually no difference whatsoever. <laughs> There's no difference. And I have a, a DNA tested lung here. It has all these fibers in it and everything. And it has all the blood everywhere. And it's been DNA tested, CAT scan, all that stuff. So that came through space. Now, I have other ones, like I say, that were here, terrestrial ones, they, very similar to that, only they don't, and there's nothing blacked off like this. Now, this one is all blacked up because it's out in space. It's being cooked. There's nothing protecting it. The reason we don't cook here on Earth is because we got all the atmosphere surrounding us that is, is filtering out all the heavy-duty stuff. And by the time it hits us, it's basically somewhere down in the visible light range where you're really not getting hurt too bad. There are occasions when you, ultraviolet comes through and the heavy-duty stuff gets down. And um, But anyway, that's a whole other issue. Now, finding all of this evidence has completely changed everything I thought about 
the origins of life. I mean, it, it sent me back to a whole new way of thinking. Okay, as you remember, or maybe not, this is the iron meteorite that I have here in my shop. It's, it's wet, and you can see that's wet inside here. But you see how black this is? This is the outside surface burnt off. This was so wet that it didn't burn off completely. Now, I have a, a meteorite, I mean a lung right here, because that is also a lung. And I have a lung right here in a microscope. And this one was DNA tested in CAT scan. It's a, it's a human lung. Now, here it is up in the microscope. There's virtually no difference. You see it? It's just not cooked. This one is exactly the same, only the black stuff is where this has more or less whitish looking stuff. And if I put it into an area where it wasn't real bloody, you can see it's, it's, it's got all that white stuff. That would have turned black. But what I want you to look at is the blood, because I'm going to put some little water in here and show you. I can, I can get really raw blood right out of this right now. So hold on, I'm going to put a little bit of water on there, like I did on the other one. Alright, that's the one that came through space. I'm going to put a little bit of water on this one here, and then I'm just going to let it sit for a second, and then I'll take a little pick and move it around, and it'll just be like blood out, running out of there. Now, to get really fresh blood, you have to drill down through inside there, which is what I did originally when I submitted the sample. But you can see it's, it's saturated with blood. And it came back uncontaminated, no contamination whatsoever, and it was human mitochondrial DNA. Okay, so don't forget, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig around a little bit in this red blood right here. And it's the same as in this, only this one cooked off. Now, you can see all this one here has a lot of white looking stuff here and there. But the black is nothing more than vein blood. Now, watch what happens when I just kick around a little bit in here. You see that? It just turns right into blood. That, that just turned into really wet blood. So really all you got to do is drill down just a very short way into there and you're into the really red blood and it's sealed. So it's not a problem to get inside where it's not being, you're rubbing it. People think you're just rubbing on the outside, no. You drill a little hole and I drill into this one somewhere, I don't remember where, this is 10 years ago, more than that. Well, somewhere in that area. Anyway. The red blood is what they make the, that's called he hematite. The, um, the black blood is um, magnetite, it's hard. And um, the hematite is what they make iron smelted, because it, it, it smelts easily. The cheap stuff goes away, this does not. The black stuff is, is hard. Okay, you see, the ones coming through space, there, there's really no major flat spots, although this does, this just cooked right off, basically. Uh, and this is a meteorite. The ones on Earth all turn flat. They all, they, from the flood, it, when, if they were in the flood, they end up being pretty well flat on one side. The bottom side is very, very flat. And this is a lung, and they separated out because it was a hot extremely hot water flood because Venus almost hit Earth. That's a goose. That's his feathers where the feathers were right on it. Everything preserved very, very well. The collagen and keratin, it, it turned into uh, like rubber bags and coated them. And the feathers are heavy in these, these rubbery substances, just like all membranes are. And that's why your skin and all your fascia, and that's why I studied fascia so deeply, because this was the, I thought it was, and it is, it is the preservation reason they preserved, and it was because the hot water caused the phosphorus lipids, by, they were, they're phosphorus membranes, phospholipid membranes, fatty phosphorus membranes. They boiled off and turned into aluminum silicates. The aluminum silicates is feldspar. And they say that you can't hardly find a stone that isn't coated with feldspar, and that's correct, because they were all 
part of this great flood. Now, remember I showed you this lung right here? This is just absolutely flawlessly perfect. And that's the investment in the bottom where I showed you where the blood was. It's easiest to see it there. There's another one at the top that holds it in place. And this is about the size of a human lung. And that's where the heart would be in the back. That's cavity there. So it died laying flat like this. And all the flesh boiled away. Now here's another one. Now you see how thick that coating is, that rubber bag? Look at the thickness of that. Inside, that's the lung. That's the little thing at the top, same as the other one has. There's the tab at the bottom, holds it in place. And that's the alveoli inside. This is the lung lung. And that's the coating. Same as this right here. All right, of course, this didn't come through space. When it all blacked off like that, and it was magnetic, you saw that's because this was a tiny little meteorite. So they're all different sizes. They're all different sizes and they're all different body parts. It's just the way it works. And I've, I've, I've looked at all the different chondri chondritic ones, chondrites, they're all the same. They're all body parts that came through space. The bigger they are, the hotter they get. The hotter they get, the more they smelt. The more they smelt, the more they turn into metals and, and so forth. So that's it for now, and um, this is going to be a very, very long and deep discussion of what our real past was. All right, even Omar Omaro, this huge comet out there, or meteorite, whatever you want to call it, this is the grip skin on the fingertip. This is a finger. That's the joint right there, and that's where the tendons lock in on this side going this way, tendons lock in going this way. That's the vein. That's the artery. This is right, right over the top of the knuckle. And I, I've had anatomists and autopsy guys look at it. And these are the tendons. And this is, yeah, it's a, definitely it was a fingertip. Now, it, a complete finger, actually. And they took hundreds and hundreds of pictures of this and shadows. And it, you get, when you have all these different shadowing, you can see all the different patterns and the, the textures, the apical tuft, the the grip skin where that that's how they peel off just like that same thing happened to my stuff you can see where the vein and the artery was all of that stuff is just completely obvious now what does this mean it means to me there was battles in the heavens exactly what they were talking about and these were these were personified deities and creatures in space that's all i can tell you if you go back to the early texts it starts to make sense. It's still really deep. But I want to show you one thing that changed my idea of Jesus Christ and God. All right? Because the next video is going to be deep, deep, deep into that. All right. This is just stunning. This is literally like bolted on, I'm not kidding you, to the two buckets of blood down here. The dark colored blood and the really red blood. And that's, you know, they pump back and forth through your body through all these tubing. All right, so some of them are red and some of them are blue. And that's the difference between the used blood and the oxygenated blood. Now, watch this. If this snapped right here, and they do, they snap right on that line. And I had a friend who passed away, a wonderful guy. He, within 15 minutes, I made him a challenge, and he went out, and he found, in 15 minutes, he found this heart. And he hit it with a hammer, it opened up, and where do you see what it was inside? If, right on the seam. All right, don't forget, I said right on the seam, right, right, right that little spot right there, is this spot right here. And all of that red blood is in, in that, and the top came right off. So you got your really, all your big red blood stuff. And then this is all used blood over here. That's vein and artery blood, I mean, vein and lymph blood, you know, it's, it's, it's not oxygenated. It's not, this is the good stuff you want to pump through the rest of your body. This is got to be fixed up and cleaned up and all that stuff. And that's how your heart works. It pushes good stuff out and, and, and bad stuff out, too. It pushes them around your body so that you can clean it up, basically. And here's what happened after he smacked that little spot right there. That's that same as that little blue spot that I showed you, only it's red because the red blood runs out. The blue does not. The, the vein, as I showed you before, doesn't run out. So you see... 
you're seeing the red blood running out of there. The blue just uh, doesn't doesn't run out. It hardens up. That's why the red blood is what they make the uh, iron out of. It's it's easy to work. The black is 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 different. The oxygen state makes it really hard. Uh, but anyway, after sitting around for about an hour or so, this happened. It all turned it's oxidated. See that? Oxygen or whatever hit it and, and changed the state of the red blood into basically deoxygenated it. It looks like to me. But you see all these plumbing spots all over here? Those are the th same things you're seeing on Banu and Psyche. Here they are all, all over these little spots. And you got the two huge ones. There's two huge ones. And the same thing on Bennu. That was Psyche. Bennu is here. It's identical. And, it, and so these, are, these aren't always impact spots. Some of them are, yes. But that's not. That's not an impact spot. That's a tube coming out. And these are veins going in, or arteries, you know, valves. And that is that, that tendinous white spot that is on the muscle, surrounding the muscle right there. And this is where all that blood puddles down in here. And you, he cracked it and it smacked right off there. And the top comes right off. It's just almost like bolted on there. I mean, it's just crazy. So I think I've shown some pretty good evidence to support this. Now, what does it mean to me? Well, it supports everything I've been saying about everything is alive. I can't go get any deeper than to tell you that my feeling right now, and I'm going to go deep into the ancient texts and a discussion about this because I could be wrong about everything. I'm not wrong about this. This is material evidence and there's no way to deny this. What it is meaning is, that's wide open for interpretation, but I am seeing it right now as the sun, as Jesus Christ said, we come from the light. We, I'll read you the text, and it was from the Nag Hammadi text, recently discovered, 1945. And they were Gnostic texts, but it was supposedly the words written down by Doubting Thomas when Jesus was walking the face of planet Earth. And he was the son of God. Well, who is God? I believe now God, the big God, is the son. Because he said we come from the light. Let me read you the text. It's, it's starting to make sense because, well, let me read you. We are the son of the light. We are the children of light. All right, this was text discovered right after World War II, Nag Hammadi text. And it, apparently, it's a, this is what it says. And they were in scrolls. And it says, these are the living Jesus spoke, which Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down. He was doubting Thomas. Now, he says, if whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I, I can't see anybody ever understanding completely, but you should seek, because he, he says this right now. He says, Jesus said, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. Now, what will you find? And will you think that that's the end? It never ends, trust me. When he finds, he will become troubled. That's an absolute certainty. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished. That is a certainty. And he will rule over all. I don't know about that. However, these are sayings that nobody else was saying. Listen to this. This is number 50. And this is what tells me that we are children of the Son, the literal Son. Now listen, here's what Jesus said. If they say to you, where did you come from? He's talking to his disciples. Say to them, we came from the light. All right, where does the light come from? From the sun. It's the place where the light came into being on its own accord and established itself. It does. The sun just shoots it out. It's on its own accord and it shoots out all by itself. It became manifest through their image. Now, that's where it gets a little murky for me. If they say to you, is it you, right? say, we are its children, the children of the light, the children of the sun. We are its children. We are the elect of the living Father. What does that mean? What does the elect mean? 
selected. We are selected. We are elected to become living creatures and to have some kind of awareness of a soul or whatever it is. I don't know exactly. This is where it gets really deep. This is why I want to have discussions with people that have some understanding of the, you know, what was written in these ancient texts because everybody had their own story. So anyway, I don't mean to confuse you, but anyway, if they ask you, what is the sign of your father in you? Say to them, it is movement and repose. All that means is light can be brilliant or it can be just subtle and, and be virtually heat or nothing at all. Light has the ability to go movement and repose. Repose just means quietness. And he also said, number 56 is a killer. Listen to this. Jesus said, whoever has come to understand the world has found only a corpse, and whoever has found a corpse is superior to the world. Well, I can tell you one thing. The world is nothing but corpses. I don't know about the basic main part of the world, which is supposed to be Gaia, is what was written in the mythology text. And I believe this is all, the mythological stuff was very, very accurate. And everything was taken from that. And sort of, you know, everybody's got their own little take on things. So what happened though, by the time Constantinople came around, Constantine, he swapped Christ for God, basically. That's how I'm seeing things right now. And again, long discussion about this coming up. So he like overturned the fact that there were gods. And, and it, it appears to me that God was God. He put Zeus, which is Jupiter, in charge of the solar system. And he ended up just turning into a sex addict. It was it's all, it's, it's all written exactly how it is in the Bible, too. And then everything had to be destroyed on Earth because there was giants and everything. I show all of this stuff. It's just none of this stuff is hidden anymore. So how do we deal with it? That's up to you. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here for today. But this is going to not be a short discussion because this, literally everything I have discovered points to the fact that these ancient texts were at least somewhat credible. We have to look at them. I know there's going to be different points of view. So... We have to look at them in, you know, from Islam and Christianity and pagans and, you know, European Americans and Native Americans and everybody had their own story. And what makes sense with everybody else's story? That's where we got to go. Now, Son of God in Christianity, I'm starting to think is ex exactly correct that. Christ was literally, literally the Son of God who is the Son. All right, and they are of the same substance. Let me read to you what they discovered, what they proclaimed at these, I believe it's called the Council of Nicene. Hold on a second. All right, these are all passages in the Old Testament and so forth about Genesis and Exodus, and all these refer to the Son of God. And, and at that point, there was no Jesus, but it, when he came, he was considered to be this, exactly this. They, they wanted to establish a common ground. So the Nicene Creed of 325 began with the profession of the Father Almighty and then states belief. This is the belief you had to have. In one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. One Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The only begotten of his Father. The only begotten of his Father of the substance of the Father. So he is literally part of the Father, basically almost like spit out. God of God, light of light, all right, this is the Son, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. So Jesus Christ is the Son of God. However, he did say that we all come from the light because we are all literally bits and pieces of the light to send here to earth, to nourish the earth and to, to, to make everything grow. Without the light, it's just it's a dead planet. It's, it's, it's 
interaction and repose. It's you got to have the dark and the light, the dark and the light, the dark and the light to make everything work. Everything is is harmonious, and it's all fashioned by what I'm. I have to consider now the God of gods, who is the Sun. Now, where he came from, I have no idea. But it's starting to look like to me that that he was the God of all the gods, and he put. Jupiter, who was Zeus, in control, and Zeus went out of control, and everything tumbled from there. And Jesus was sent, and then there was the floods and all these kind of things. Well, the flood was earlier, and then Jesus was sent to recoup whatever was salvageable or something like that. So, and we need to talk, a lot of discussion. A lot of discussion has to take place. But I, I really know. I mean, I can't see any other way than all these body parts in space. They didn't just get there for no reason. All right, these body parts in space, they're everywhere. And they're big. And they've come back with the, right from Bennu with uh, pieces of it. They have it in the laboratory right now. It's going to be blood. It's going to literally be blood. And I did a video showing exactly what the chemistry of blood is. And that's what it's going to be. Now, I don't know which where they took it from. If it was a vein side versus the artery side, one of them's going to have a little more... Fe202 and a little less Fe203, that type of thing. It depends on which valve it was. So, seeing all this though, what is, what's the main takeaway from this? I, I have to go for the ancient mythologies and, and look at them as, you know, is this possible? And I, and I see it is. Because if you take Apollodorus 1.6.3, it talks about Typhon, the dragon that's in the desert. And there's no question he's there. And there's no question it's exactly identical to what they talk about. The, the circumstances and everything. Him spitting out the fire, trying to attack the fish. It's, it was, it's all written. It's, it was all, it's still written in that text. Apollodorus 1.6.3. Just look it up. It's Typhon in the desert in Morocco. You can't miss him attacking a fish just below him. So, the next video is going to be, you know, a discussion about what does this mean to eternity? Basically, that's where I'm looking. What is, nobody gets out alive, all right? Let's go with that. Nobody gets out alive. So, is there a good place to go and a bad place or no place at all? You know, like I told you somewhere in that uh, Jesus said, don't stop seeking until you find. And I haven't found everything. And I don't think you can ever find everything, but you just got to keep looking. So I think that's the best I can do. You're never going to understand all that stuff in the Gospel of Thomas. I, it's Some of it is um, it's counterintuitive and it just doesn't make any sense to me. It has to make sense because if it came from Jesus' lips, but there's things about you, you have to hate your parents and your brothers and your sisters if you're going to love Jesus. And or, There's some other things that are, are, are hard to understand what the meaning is. If it's just a straight out meaning, yeah, you just got to hate them, forget them, they're no good. Well, that's hard for me to accept. So there's got to be some other meaning to me. And and again, that's a. It's a this is going to be deep, it's going to be deep, 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 and deeper. And I don't think there's ever going to be any end to it because I don't think you can ever stop understanding. Because I can, I, I, you know, the, the universe is very, 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 very large, and there is a lot of stars emitting light, which to me would be the father of that system. And then how they run it, I don't know. And but I, they, they, every single culture on Earth had stories about battles in the heavens and dragons and giants. Every single one of those things is supported now. Not one single thing is not supported in the ancient texts. I see nothing that I can't support. I mean, I, there are things I can't support. That's that's a, that's a, a bad statement to make. <laughs> But seeing what I see here, I have to have them take them at, at face value, a lot of them, and say, well, there's a possibility here. And that's the possibilities I want to look into. Because I, 
what I had discovered originally, I would have just blown off and just laughed at, and 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 I, and I was being really assaulted for thinking the way I was thinking. And I just finally, I just said, well, I'm just going to think the way I'm thinking. I let him assault me, and it's led to all of this understanding, and it could lead to a, a, a better eternity for me. I'm hoping. I mean, that would be pretty nice. <laughs> you know, if you can get something good out of it, you know. And I believe right now, I'm going with Jesus Christ is the Savior, and He's the one that you have to put your faith in and trust and, and seek. And seek until you find. That's, all, he's, that's what He said. That's what I'm going to do. I'm with you, Jesus. I'm on the way, buddy. <laughs>